Hey guys, Thomas here, and today I am very proud to finally present to you guys the BMS Raptor version 2. First we'll do a quick recap on what the BMS V1 motors were all about, then we'll go into detail on the BMS V2 motors and what some of the changes and upgrades are, and then we'll finish with some flight video. If you want to skip to any of these sections of the video, timestamps will be in the description box below. So a quick recap on the BMS V1 motors. Uh, we're going to focus specifically on the gold lines here since that's our best comparison between the version 1 and the version 2 motors. That motor was a bit of an oddball combination for what most people expected at the time. Uh, when I developed that motor with T-Motor, it was all data driven. I knew some feel things that I wanted. I really wanted that mid-range to have really good response all the way up to the top end of the stick. So that really dictated the size and the KV I went for and then it was all about optimization from there. When people saw the KV when we first released the motor, a lot of people questioned it, thought it was too high, there was just no way it was going to be efficient or you know compete against anything, let alone outperform things. Uh, obviously now in the future I sort of predicted where the propeller direction was going to go and the propeller direction went there and pretty much everyone's gone to that similar KV range for racing. Some people are trying to push higher, lower, obviously depending on stators and you know a whole bajillion other elements but long story short uh, we were sort of there right before the curve and so if anything the Raptor series became more relevant with time than it was at release. Okay, with that short recap out of the way, let's get into the BMS Raptor V2s. Like the first generation, these are still a 2.3 or 6.5 2000 kV motor. Obviously, that doesn't sort of mean much since from manufacturer to manufacturer, uh, design to design, that can mean very different things in performance, but that general size range I still felt was the right thing. Like I said before, I think it's more relevant now than it ever has been, and so I wanted to use that as my foundation. From there, we already had a reference point of the BMS V1 motors, and the goal was basically outperform that everywhere. I was really happy with where the performance of the V1s were at, but I knew if we were making a V2, it had to just outperform the first one in every element. So the first area we focused on, which was probably the easiest to sort of get a grasp on and just sort of start forming the shape of the motor, was we worked on adding lightness or weight reduction. I love the saying, adding lightness. Anyway, we basically looked at every part of the motor and looked at how we could redesign it in such a way to achieve the same performance. There was no going for a loss of performance, a loss in power output or torque or anything. We just wanted what we had before, but less weight. And so we looked at everything. Uh, one of the really cool areas you can see that we did a big design change was we changed the design of the lock nut so we could redesign the motor shaft. And what that means is last year, we had a really tall motor shaft that would sort of take impacts. That way you could still get the lock nut off if you wanted to, there was sort of a section with no thread. This year, the lock nut's actually designed to absorb the impact and the motor shaft sits inside the lock nut, as in physically lower. And that means that if you do have a big impact at the top of the motor, usually it's the lock nut that's going to go, not the motor shaft, and you can still get that lock nut out and replace it. And it also has a side benefit of being significantly lighter than the previous year's motor. The benefit of all this weight reduction was the fact that it makes the quad as a whole feel a lot more responsive in the sense that there's less weight overall, but especially in the rotational components of the motors, by taking weight out of those, you've all of a sudden got a lot more response, a lot more sharpness, the pit control can work better. It's one of those things where if you can reduce weight in that area specifically, it makes a really big difference. So we really knuckled down on that spot. The next part we worked on, especially the team motor engineers focused on, was the electrical components of the motor. So this is your stator and your windings and sort of that whole manufacturing process and the base design itself a little bit. What we ended up doing was improving the heat management of the motor. So what that means is you're able to have higher throttle for longer, that sort of sustained throttle, it tends to generate less heat. And as a result of that too, the motor ends up being quite a bit more efficient. One really neat little one we did was we actually reduced the gap from where the thrust line is to the base of the arm. What this means is a better weight distribution and theoretically a better thrust distribution. Uh, it's one of those ones where the thrust component is really hard to quantify in real space, especially with cornering and how that whole momentum system works. But either way, it's an area we could improve, so we decided to do it anyway. Uh, a big topic that's sort of reoccurring within this motor was no compromise, where if there was something we could improve, we'd just do it. After making all these little tweaks and redesigns, we had a look at the motor as a whole again and decided to focus a little bit on durability. This was a really fine balance since we didn't want to add any weight back, 
So it was really just looking at the geometry, looking at how the previous motors used to bend and take damage, and just seeing if there's any little tweaks we can make to improve durability. We ended up really focusing on this sort of base area around the motor, and that basically stops any kind of bending like this. Uh, if you hit hard enough, you'll still break it, but we've just sort of increased that threshold by a bit more. Uh, it also means that less likely things are going to get out of balance over time, which means that your motor runs cooler, so the whole longevity should be better than the previous version. So at this point, we'd had all the functional parts done. We had more durability, we had more performance across the board. Now it was up to the looks. And when people saw these motors for the first time, uh, a company might have leaked photos of it too early, but Either way, it was actually kind of worked out to be a good thing because I got a lot of messages of people saying how much they miss the V1 color scheme. And it's one of those things where actually I really appreciate that people got connected to the motor. If you go back to the original BMS video, I did say that I wanted it to be a complete experience. I wanted people to enjoy the looks, the feel of that whole experience all the way through to the flying itself. So the fact that people grew an attachment to that really did hit me in the feels. I really did appreciate it. So thank you to everyone who did comment on that. Uh, and I do really hope that you fall in love with the looks of the BMS V2 also. So some of the changes we've done, a lot of this was formed around that pursuit of adding lightness. So you'll see the lines are quite a bit sharper than before. We've actually reduced just fractional amounts, sort of shaving away at some of the aluminum in different areas to try and really improve less rotational weight. As a result of that, the motor looks a lot sharper. It looks a lot cleaner. Because we've only got the 1KV this year, I decided to change up the color scheme to this bronze finish. Uh, it's inspired by a lot of sort of your race car lightweight rims. It's just a color I've been really obsessed with lately. I think it goes really well with the BMS colors, but also sort of any color combo. Um, you'll see a lot of supercars doing this at the moment. So if you just have a look at their bright, crazy colors and what these go with, it's... I think this is a really good color. I think a lot of people it'll grow on. I think a lot of people already like it. Uh, whatever your thoughts, I'll leave them in the comments below because I am curious. Uh, also, just colors are fun. Obviously, you know, looks don't necessarily equate to real world performance, but if your motor looks good and you feel good, then you're gonna fly better. That's my theory. I love that whole complete experience thing. I think we did it really well with the V1, so I decided to try and, you know, do something different for this year, and I'm really happy with how these look. So, the next change we did wasn't actually to the motor at all, it was the packaging. We've gone for a cardboard box this time. One of the side benefits I didn't actually realize was the fact that this is so much easier to store than before, and I think it actually works out to be really good protection, the way these boxes are designed. Uh, but the main reason we did this was actually environmental impact. Uh, with sort of the way things are going in the world and sort of realizing that, you know, as a brand even, I'm sort of getting growing bigger and we're selling more stuff than ever, uh, I decided I wanted to start changing the direction a little bit more towards environmentally friendly where possible. Obviously that's really difficult when you're trying to balance cost in it too, you don't want these to get too expensive, and sort of trying to get the infrastructure for that is difficult, it takes time. But I decided if I start now, and even just make small tweaks like this, hopefully down the line, you know, 10 years, 20 years ahead, we'll be at a different stage to where we are now. So that is the BMS Raptor version 2s. When we designed these, our goal was to outperform the version 1 with no compromise, and we achieved that. They're lighter than before, they're more durable, better thermal efficiency, and just overall a faster setup. Now what we're gonna show you is some footage of the production motors in action. Before everyone else got the chance to get production motors, we got them first to do testing to make sure they were 100% right. So this is them now, I hope you guys enjoy the video, and I'll see you in the next one.